Today I want to take a look at how to connect to SharePoint Online from PowerShell using a certificate instead of client ID and secret. So our traditional way with a client ID and secret will get us connected, but it has some concerns with putting a password as plain text into the PowerShell file itself. Maybe a little bit too accessible, too easy to find. And also just something that has a, a short expiration of maybe one year where you're going to get a support ticket when it fails to connect and then we have to generate a new secret, not always knowing how the first one was done. So there are other ways you can connect using a certificate, which is more secure and has a longer expiration date. So we're going to take a look at two scripts and two different steps. The first step is how to register in Azure Active Directory. That will essentially create the certificate. And the second one is to connect and to use the certificate, which comes in the way of a PFX file. And that one way of thinking of it is a really long password, thousands of letters long, too much to type or copy and paste. We need an entire file. So we want to use that certificate to establish our connection because it's much harder to repeat. You can't find it copy paste as plain text in a script, can't quite guess your way into it, and it does have a longer expiration date, which helps us again with the support tickets. So our first step here is going to be to declare the name of the tenant that we're working on, and this will be whatever the DNS name is, dot on Microsoft.com. So here we have SPJF, and we'll go ahead and declare a text file name, and this is going to hold the client ID from the registration step, which occurs a little bit later down here. And the client ID is important because that's the ID of the Azure AD application. So we're registering not inside of SharePoint like we did with the classic app ID and secret. That's registering with SharePoint. Here we want to register with Azure. It comes back in a little bit different format. So we'll go ahead and run a couple of lines of text here. And we'll walk through the, the code. The next one is creating a secure string password. And you can make this whatever you want to. For this particular demo, we simply have the word password. Next, we're going to run a PMP command to register in Azure Active Directory and bring back a reg object. This is going to create a pop-up window. And from the pop-up window, we want to go ahead and log in. You might have to do a multi-factor. That's fine. You can do text message codes and MFA pop-ups on your phone. That's all fully supported. And what's going to happen is it's starting a consent flow in the background. And it's using the default permissions. And it created an ID number here starting with 4E. And that's uh, something we'll be using in just a minute. Now there is a 60 second timeout, which you saw with the progress bar. And at the end of that, we get this pop-up window asking us to accept the permissions for your organization. So this is an admin level. This is a tenant wide grant. So this is something you might need someone else to run. Your average end user may have site collection admin. That's good enough for making app IDs and secrets, but here you're going to need something more. This is a higher level permission. So if you don't have the access to complete it, get in touch with your administrator who can run this on your behalf. But it's going to have full control of all site collections is the scope that we're using here. And these are all Azure API grants. So there are ways of scoping this a little bit differently. If you needed to do a single site with the sites.selected scope, that's one way that you can narrow things down, right? Maybe only do a particular site. Uh, but for this demo, I'm taking the default settings, which will cover all site collections for the tenant. We'll do the accept button, let the flow complete. And we have an ID number that comes out of this. The registration object, which is returned, actually has some really interesting stuff. So we'll zoom in and take a closer look. We get a PFX and CER file. These are the two files for the certificate. Now, how are those different? One's the public key, the other's the private key. So PFX has the good stuff. That's the private key, and it comes with the password that we provided. CER is more of a public side. It kind of has a, a thumbprint, and that's really what it works from, which you see coming in here as well. This middle value with the client ID, that's an Azure AD item. That is the actual GUID number for the app when it was registered. And then down here we have base64 encoded. This is the certificate itself. 
and you can see it kind of terminating here with the, the double equals for the, the ending. So it creates a certificate, tells us a lot about it, and it puts the file in the same folder where we're working, which is fantastic. And that lets us pick it up for usage in the next script where we want to actually make the connection. Now to hang on to this client ID, I'm running a line here that will take that one value, only the client ID GUID, and it will write it into a text file. That makes it persisted and saved where we can use it in the second step, which is the connection. Now this is it. That's all it takes to make the certificate. It's really not that hard, and we can even automate it by using a PowerShell file like this one to go ahead and consistently generate those files. Now looking into Azure Active Directory, we can see that we have a new entry here for PMP PowerShell, and it has a client ID, and it has today's date. Really cool stuff. This is that same client ID that we were saving to a text file to make it easy to use from one script to the next. So the registration script can save its work, save the ID number, so the next connecting script can use that same number without having to edit the script. We don't really want to edit PowerShell files much. We'd rather give them inputs. So saving this ID to text lets us provide an input to the second script making the connection. When we come into the Azure AD registration, you'll see, again, here's the GUID number for the ID. That's perfectly normal, matches up. And over here, we have one certificate, but no secrets. No secrets. So this one's operating a little bit different. And here's our PFX CER for the certificate. If we come into the API permissions, you'll see the different things that were granted. Those are the levels. They're granted tenant-wide. This was the pop-up window we saw. You might not have access to it. may have to hand that off to an administrator, somebody else that can click the button on your behalf. And here we have sites full control, which, as I mentioned before, it's possible to do sites selected. And you can even come in here and make those modifications on this screen in Azure. So just because you began with PowerShell doesn't mean you have to stay there only. You can always come in here and do some extra things come in and do like an application permission, come in here and look for sites selected, and you know, kind of search and see what we have that's uh, available from a, a graph perspective. Because there's going to be a lot of different things that are possible. What we're doing here with connecting to SharePoint, uh, this will work just fine. But I did want to highlight that it is possible to bring in site selected and do specific collections only. And that would be managed by URL. So something that can be added, and you would follow the normal documentation for doing that. Back over to PowerShell, we're going to switch to script number two, and this is our connection. So let's say that we'd want to enumerate the sites that are on the tenant, what all is out there, right? So you can come in here and tell it the name of your tenant, get the ID for the, the connection, and we'll go ahead and use get content to pick up whatever's inside the text file. And there's our ID number again. This is the, the Azure App Registration GUID, and it starts with 4E, the same one that we had before. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run this for making our connection, and we're handing it a PFX file in the ending that is in the same working folder where we're running at currently. So if I do dir PFX, you can see the file is here, and that's what we're using as input. So with our connection established, we can start running PMP commands to read and write data. So if we want to enumerate all the sites that are in the tenant, totally fine, can definitely be done. And we see things coming back here that are all part of the tenant with the templates formatted. And we know that we have a successful hook because we're able to read data. So that's all that it takes to go ahead and use a certificate instead of client ID and secret. Keep in mind, you will want to keep those files nearby. So as you're doing your development, remember that you're going to end up with more than just the script file itself. You're also going to end up with this PFX file that you need to provide as input. Plan ahead for that. Thanks for watching.